I made the decision early when I took on this role that I had to show vulnerability. I had to let people get to understand who I was, what I was about, what my value sets are. And so to do that, I had to be vulnerable from, from day one because we'd just gone through a significant amount of change and I was really then focused on obviously driving a positive culture. So I'd come in, new kid on the block, not from the region, not from the sport, and all of a sudden I disestablished seven roles in my first six weeks. And so I needed to very quickly get everybody back on board and, and the way I felt the best way to do that was to be vulnerable, uh, I guess, to tell my story so that people understood who I am and, and what I was about and, and I guess, you know, what my value sets were so that they could then understand and see a different side of me. And so that then opened up the conversation. Um, I led, I went first, I was vulnerable, and that then flowed obviously from there. And that's where we then were able to utilize the emotional culture deck to have those conversations with everybody else and to take that team on their journey. And we started on that journey with doing it through an individual uh, approach. And then we brought that back to the wider team. And over time, we've then deepened that connection through our professional sides and, and our community as well. You know, leadership is interesting. It doesn't necessarily need to be the head of the organisation. It's probably about finding people that are leaders within a different context without necessarily having the job title. So it's probably identifying individuals that are motivated and then to try and get that momentum that sits behind us. So then it becomes the norm, it's familiar, it's, it's what people do and over time you know you get those people that are lagging behind and you've got the early adopters over here over time that that bell curve is going to shift and you get more people that are supportive and on board and, and moving forward in the same direction look i think leaders typically opt for the cognitive approach because it's what we know it's familiar it's consistent um, it's what we've always done and so i think it provides that sort of rational framework that enables the leader to sometimes control the conversation. And so the emotional kind of um, approach uh, is, is not that, it's, it's, it's different, it's the complete opposite of that. And therefore it sometimes create the un creates the unknown, which can be you know, uncomfortable at times. So I think that's where the emotional culture deck can, can really help because what it does do is it creates this opportunity in a really non-threatening way to have those conversations uh, in a fun, safe environment that, that people are, are, are conversating through card game. I think it's a mixture of the failure of leadership to really understand the potential of getting uh, and engaging in that emotional piece. And I guess it's also a failing and not understanding how you'd go about that. It's quite daunting to think, well, how am I going to approach this? How am I going to have that, that, that conversation um, that is at a deeper level, that it's, it's, it's more sort of uh, emotive than, than just the standard sort of conversation that you might have uh, with those working within your team. So I think once again, that's where the Emotional Culture Deck provides a great platform to facilitate those conversations. The, the deck disarms things straight away and it, it creates a really non-threatening channel to have those conversations through. Look, the ECD has changed my own leadership style, I think, purely by you know preparing to be more vulnerable and more open. I, I have approached things differently before and so it was a reflection upon myself coming into this new organisation is that I wanted to be a leader that was more vulnerable and hence why I started the way that I did. It enabled me to probably be more consistently open, I guess, as opposed to just doing it in one-off occasions at a particular time of year. It's enabled me to live that live that value of, of being vulnerable, sharing, and being part of the team um, and being on their level, not, not seeing myself as oh, the CEO, actually trying to get alongside people. Yeah, look, I think one of the greatest challenges for a leader in a CEO role is that isolation. You know, quite often you're not part of a team, you're sort of seen at a distance. Um, and so using the emotional culture deck, it does create an ability for you to be one of the team, you know, for you to disarm yourself and for the layers of hierarchical structure to sort of be off the table because you're all sitting around sharing the same things. It shows the human side of a leader. You know, quite often you look at a CEO and think, oh, they're indestructible because, you know, in my instance, they're walking in here and, and changing things. And once again, it just humanizes that leader and creates more of a connection as opposed to a, a divide between, you know, the CEO and us. Uh, it creates that one team approach. 
For a practitioner to get the best out of a leader, you have to establish trust. You know, hopefully the leader's approaching you because this is something that they're interested in. CEOs are typically busy people. They've got lots of, of things on their plate. So they need to really be able to ensure that this is gonna have a positive effect. So you've gotta find ways that you can demonstrate that to them because obviously they need to buy into it for it then to have that ripple effect through the organization. One of the critical things for the practitioner is not to probably approach this as a sales pitch, to approach this as a tool that's gonna to help the leader ultimately be more successful. You know, it does have an effect on the bottom line if, if your team morale is higher, if the team are more connected, if they're working more collaboratively. It's, it's about actually just taking the, the leader on the journey with you and get that deeper understanding of the benefits um, and then obviously embrace it and, and take it forward. Look, I think getting people to slow down is, is absolutely fundamental. You know, I hate the word busy, but it's, it's what we are in this day and age. Um, and so, you know, you've sort of just got to press pause sometimes. And we work a lot on that with our staff is when they are really frantic and under pressure is, hey, take five, 10 minutes and just regather your thoughts and actually think about what matters most because quite often we're busy for busy's sake and not actually moving towards and achieving the things that, that we need to be that we need to be working on. So it's that real clarity. And so, you know, pressing pause, taking time, slowing down to get that clarity of thought, to then be able to go and do what you need to do and un have an understanding of what the impact of that action is gonna be, I believe is, is really, really important. We use the ECD at particular times when we're under high pressure. So an example would be when we come back from our New Year break, most businesses around New Zealand have a nice summer holiday during the summer period here, we're at our busiest. We're delivering the Super Smash and we've got people all over the place obviously heavily involved in, in summer cricket activity. So that's our busy time and so we always reconnect at our busy times with the Emotional Culture Deck. We use that to slow us down. We use that to reflect on how did we feel last year, positively and negatively, and what are our intentions for the year coming forward? Because that then focuses people. It focuses that energy that we need to ensure that we are delivering in the right areas and, and to make sure that people have that clarity, uh, which hopefully or ultimately drives success.